I have um, I have a private community. A lot of guys come in it, and um, you know they want to do some work on themselves. And this is a recurring thing that I've seen come up uh, a few times in the last week. And let's be honest. I mean, guys think this way a lot. So most guys, they'll come to the space. They'll read some books. They'll watch a bunch of videos. They'll tune into some podcasts. Some provide some information. Some some try to hold horrible people accountable. Um, I'm going to use one spoke here as a visual. Kind of explain this to you. Just going to color it in here. Because this is what most guys do. The vast majority of people that come across this information, red pill information, they, you know, they unplug. They see the code in the matrix. They see what's going on. This is what they end up doing. Here's your visual, folks. So you see the the spokes in the wheel. And by the way, like these things here, I'm going to try to get my face out of it so it's not trying to focus on my face. So these things here could be 10, 12, 17 spokes, depending on how I want to define it. But I want to narrow it down to these top seven. And most people will come in, they'll get red pill aware. So this one spoke here that's colored in right up to the tip, okay, all the way in, <laughs> not just the tip, but all the way up. That one there would be RPA, just call it red pill awareness. A lot of guys can get there very, very easily. They'll read a few books. They got my book. They've watched a few of my videos. They've seen a few of the podcast episodes. You know, they follow me on social and they consume some other content. They're like, okay, I got it. I see the code in the matrix. Looks money, game, status, da, 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 right? And then they're like, okay, okay, okay. So now they're aware. And then they just kind of stop there, which is so bizarre to me. Or they'll start complaining or sulking or they'll go to a dark place or they'll go looking for others to... Uh, you know, confirm the reasons why they're not getting what they want. And then these other ones, I'll just put L, M. What did I jot down here in my description notes here? Looks, money, status, game, frame, and captivation. Captivation is really important. I'm going to talk about that one because a lot of dudes miss that, especially the older guys with bank too. Looks, money, status, game, frame, captivation, and RPA. Okay. So they got one, that one right there. They got the one, but then guess what? They don't bother with the other ones. They just don't. They'll just they'll just go, you know what? My looks department is eh. What am I gonna do about it? My money status is eh. I'm just gonna keep working my minimum wage job or whatever you know annual pay gets you. It's like eh. Like if you can go 10 out of 10 on your awareness level, See the code in the matrix, unplug from the comforting lies, see the uncomfortable truth, understand what women respond to. You see it all, you're fully red pill aware, but then you're like, eh, you know what? There's only so much money out there and that guy has a lot of it and that guy has a lot of it. And how the hell am I supposed to get out of it, get some of it? There's, it's just impossible for me to get it. And then they're like, you know, like a four out of 10 in the money. And then that means that they don't have a lot of status. They don't have a lot of influence. So they're like a three out of 10 or a four out of 10 or a five out of 10. Maybe they're better looking or they're, you know, a reasonable athlete on a sports team with a following of 500 people or something like that. You see what I'm saying? Like these things will start to fluctuate. So they're, so they're fully aware, but they just kind of don't bother with the other things. Game, you know, they don't bother trying to game. They don't try to bother. They don't bother trying to game women when they go on dates. They don't bother trying to game you know, people in their lives when they're when they're going about things, right? Like to, to, to see how they respond to certain things, right? Frame's another really important one. Some guys will get full on red red pill awareness. The trad cons love to do this. So they'll go full on, you know, red pill awareness. They'll get a girl, they start dating, you know, she lets them, uh, you know, touch her boobies. Uh, she touches his pee pee. They start to date, things start to go well. They become exclusive and they start, you know, like their boyfriend and girlfriend or something like that. But then they totally lose a frame in the relationship, even though what brought them to the space, got them the information, they see the code in the matrix, they unplug, and then they're just like, you know what, I'm just going to leave it. I'm not, I'm not going to apply that, right? It's like taking years and years of boxing or jujitsu or karate or something like that, and then some guy picks a fight with you and you just stand there and you do nothing with it. Same thing. Let's move on. Let's talk about the captivation one. It's another big, big spoke in the wheel. Actually, you know what? This is a huge spoke in the wheel. A lot of guys, a lot of guys really, really miss this one too. 
Big time. Big time. You know who misses captivation the most? And all it really means is, well, here, let's Google the, def the dictionary definition terms so we can break it down exactly. Oh, what does the Webster say? The state of being intensely interested as by awe or terror. That'd be even, even better, you know? <laughs> you, don't, you don't want somebody to be terrified of you, but you want them to not be particularly comfortable, right? Now, the state of being intensely interested in something, captivated by, is very, very important. I see a lot of more seasoned men out there. I've got, I've got one friend of mine. He, um, he's in my group. He uh, recently had a, uh, a nice date with a younger lady. Didn't go so well. He had a, a slight mishap with his uh, mode of transportation. Um, I know you're watching, my friends. That's why I'm, I'm mentioning you. And I said to him early on when we were chatting, because he was really struggling. You know, he had his he, like he really had his game together. He had his money sorted. He's a good-looking guy. He takes care of himself, like pro like properly executed with self-care. You know, for his age, you wouldn't you wouldn't think that he's sixty. Like he looks at least ten to fifteen years younger. Um, and again, you know, had a number of exits in his business, has done very, very well. But he didn't really have anything interesting going on. Again, the definition of captivation is a state of being intensely interested. Women, like you can do anything to women. They've said this for a long time. You can do anything to women except bore them. Can't bore them. You can do pretty much anything else, literally. But you can't bore them. Women don't have patience for boring, right? So you're a rich guy, decent looking, you're in good shape but you don't have anything interesting to do with women when you take them out. Why? You know, it's like all these spokes in a wheel. You could, you could have the looks, the money, the status, red pill awareness, blah, 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 but you're not captivating. That wheel's not going to, you put pressure on it and then it transfers into the hub as you're rolling down. The spokes of the wheel that aren't fully maximized out are not going to hold the weight of the wheel. It's going to run lopsided. It's not going to work properly. And that's what most guys get themselves into, if you see what I'm saying. Again, look at that visual. Just look at it. That's what most guys do. Oh, I'm fully red pill aware. I know what I know what women respond to, blah, blah, blah. But they're fat or they're broke or they're not interesting. They don't have any hobbies. I had a conversation the other week with another guy. Um, he kind of went into a dark place, you know, like a sulking area of the internet and collaborated with a few other guys in that space who confirmed his, you know, his deepest, darkest fears. And um, he started to walk away from that, which is a, you know, which is a good move. But when I asked him, like, what he likes to do for fun, you know, like, what do you, what do you do when you're not working? Because basically what he does, he works and then he goes home and then he works and he goes home. It's like, okay, well, what do you do for fun? Right? Because, you know, because he's trying to date women. I get it. Fine. You know, that's your imperative. You're on this earth to scatter seed. You like women. I get it. Fine. But there's work to do. So I says to him, what do you do for fun? I like to go to the gym. Um, I like to work. I like to talk to some of the guys in the IT department and, you know, stuff like that. Okay, but if you ask a chick out, what are you going to tell her? Like, let's go and go to the gym together? Because he's not particularly fit. Like, he's not a Chad, okay? He's not a jacked, muscled up, shoulders like boulders, big dude, right? So it's not like, you know, he's going to say, hey, let's go to these. He's, he's kind of... He's kind of moving in that direction. He's starting to anyway. But on a scale of like Rip Chad to Poindexter, he's more on the Poindexter side still. And that's not a disparaging comment. That's just stating fact. And it's like, okay, if you're on that side of the scale, you're not going to get an attractive woman to want to go out and do something like work out with Poindexter. She'll probably work out with Chad. So it's like, what are you going to do to be captivating? Like, what do you do that's interesting when you're not working? And, you know, guys, if you're in your 20s, why don't you have something going on? Like, I understand older guys. Like, older guys have social networks. They might have business forums that they're involved in, entrepreneurs groups. Uh, they might have obligations to, you know, their own children if they're fathers. Um, so they might have less time. But if you're a younger guy and you're dating and you don't have anything interesting going on in your world, how are you going to introduce women into it? You know, you don't go to her world, Okay. When you're dating women, guys, and this is especially true for older guys. Older guys make this mistake a lot, a lot of the times too. You don't, you don't go into her world and be like, "Oh, let's go to the Justin Bieber concert," or whatever, you know, whatever that narrative is. You get the point. You're not going into her world. You're inviting her into your world, and a woman is only going to want to come into your world and do something 
with you if you're interesting, if you're captivating, if you can keep her attention. And it doesn't take a lot of money. I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. It doesn't matter where you live. This guy happened to live in a uh, nice part of the world. I'm not going to say where. Very nice part of the world that happens to have um, waterfalls and nice national parks. And I'm like, you know, like, what do you do for fun? Oh, you know, I... Um, Basically nothing. You know what I got. Well, why don't you invite her out on a date, pick up a couple of, uh, you know, cold drinks or coffees or something, or tell her to make a picnic, for example, you know, if this is a longer one, if it's a second date or something like that, and then take her to go and explore. Let's go into this national park and go and hike over to this waterfall, right? That's interesting. That'll be captivating. A lot of women are down for stuff like that. But if you're just like, ah, eh, you know, I just go to work and I like to go to the gym and I sometimes talk to my friends after work and we have a beer sort of thing, that's not particularly interesting. Great, you're red pill aware. What about the other spokes of the wheel? What about the other spokes of the wheel? 